We're going to discuss a revolutionary advancement in the semiconductor business in today's video. The fastest microchip ever created by China has completely changed the game. As you may know, the essential parts of contemporary electronics, including the computers and cell phones people use for communication and entertainment, the automobiles we drive for commuting, and the satellites that orbit the Earth for observation and navigation, are semiconductors. Transistors, which are tiny devices that function as switches or amplifiers for the electric current flowing through a circuit, make up semiconductors. Transistors are capable of a wide range of tasks, including information processing, data processing and data storage. Nanometers, or one billionth of a meter, is the unit of measurement used to describe the size, performance and efficiency of semiconductors. The space between transistors on a semiconductor chip is referred to as its size. More transistors can fit into a chip of a smaller size, making the chip quicker and more powerful. Since smaller semiconductors can increase an electronic device's speed, power and usefulness, the semiconductor industry has made shrinking semiconductors a top priority. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company TSMC, has dominated the semiconductor business for the past few decades. The semiconductor industry produces the chips that power various electronic gadgets. The largest contract chip maker in the world, TSMC provides chips to numerous high-profile tech companies who design their own processors but outsource the production process, including Apple, Nvidia and Qualcomm. By reaching the most advanced process nodes a term that describes the degree of miniaturization and complexity of a chip TSMC has been able to hold on to its leadership position. With cutting-edge technology known as Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography UV, TSMC has been able to build chips at 5 nanometers and 3 nanometers process nodes, which are the tiniest and most advanced in the industry. Using an extremely low wavelength of light, around 13.5 nanometers, patterns are etched on silicon wafers, which are tiny slices of silicon used as the basis for chips, using the EUV method. Thanks to EUV, TSMC is able to build complicated circuits that make up a chip with more accuracy and precision than with earlier technologies. By enabling TSMC to create chips that are faster, more potent and more energy efficient than its competitors, EUV gives the company a competitive advantage. However, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation SMICE, the largest chip manufacturer in China, has been challenging TSMC's hegemony in the industry by developing quickly even in the face of severe US sanctions. Because of concerns about potential threats to its economic competitiveness and national security, the United States has been working to restrict China's access to cutting-edge semiconductor technology. In addition to restricting SMI's access to raw materials and software necessary for chip production, the United States has outlawed the sale of EUV machines and other vital equipment to the company. Due to this, TSMC, who has been able to use EUV equipment to make more sophisticated chips with fewer features and higher performance, is now in a better position than SMI. Mike hasn't given up though. It has been producing devices at a quasi 7 nm process, which is comparable to TSMC's 7 nanometers process in terms of performance and efficiency, utilizing an older method called deep ultraviolet lithography. DUV. This is an amazing accomplishment, since DUV requires more layers of masks and exposure durations than EUV, and is far more complicated and expensive. In addition, SMAAC has built new fabrication facilities around China, employed thousands of engineers and scientists, and made significant investments in R&D. The Chinese government, which has made the growth of the homegrown semiconductor industry a strategic priority, has also backed SMAAC. And SMIC has advanced even more at this point. The Financial Times recently reported that SMIC is establishing new production lines to produce 5NM chips for Huawei, another massive Chinese tech company that is the target of US sanctions. This would offer Huawei a competitive advantage in the smartphone market and put SMIC on par with TSMC's existing technology. Furthermore, SMIC is not the only Chinese business that is advancing semiconductor technology. 
Recently, a Chinese-U.S. research team produced the first graphene semiconductor in history, a working gadget composed of a single layer of carbon atoms, a substance with remarkable qualities including excellent conductivity, flexibility, and strength is graphene. It has the ability to completely transform the electronics industry by enabling chips that are quicker, smaller, and more energy efficient. What does all of this signify for technology's future? Soon. This indicates that China is closing the gap on the United States and Taiwan in the semiconductor competition and could soon overtake them. It indicates that China is lessening its reliance on outside suppliers and growing more independent and self-sufficient in the manufacture of essential parts for its IT sector. It indicates that China is becoming more powerful and influential on the international stage, providing consumers and companies with more options and more affordable costs. Furthermore, it indicates that China is expanding its doors for creativity and innovation in order to produce new goods and services that the entire globe may find useful. Even so, it also means that as both countries fight for technological leadership and domination, tensions and competitiveness between them will rise. It implies that as more data and information are processed and stored on chips, the risks and difficulties related to cybersecurity, privacy and ethics would rise. Also, since chips are affecting more areas and facets of our lives, the stakes and effects of technological advancement will be greater. So what do you think about China's semiconductor breakthrough? Do you think it is a good thing or a bad thing for the world? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you next time.